Hello and welcome to this video on measures of central tendency and dispersion. This is going to be the first video in our new unit on statistical reasoning. So we're going to be looking at different statistics. Uh, the first lesson here, it's going to be a little bit longer. So a lot of the kind of definitions and whatnot I already have written in, but all of the work we're going to uh, be writing out. So the first thing we have there is a population, and population in statistics means the entire group, the whole group. So you don't just pick a couple of them, you take the entire group. For a sample, this is part of the group. An example of a sample could be, rather than maybe taking like a whole school and surveying them, you could just take maybe a sample from each grade, and then that would be less uh, information that you had to take in, and it would be a lot easier on yourself. Whereas a population would be taking the entire school and using that for your data. Uh, point number two, it says measures of central tendency. So the word central tendency, this means how close to the middle you're going to be. Okay, so central is center. And there's going to be three different things under that. So mean, this is going to be our average. You've probably heard of the mean before or the average. And to calculate that, what you do is you add all the values together and then divide by the total number of values and we're going to do some examples like this. The symbol that we use for mean, there's going to be two different symbols. It's either x with a bar above it, so we call it x bar, and that is the mean or the average for a sample, so only like a selected amount of data. And then there's this symbol here and that's mu, it's a Greek letter, so it's mu, and that is for a population. So that's when you take the entire population. So x bar for a sample mu for population. Then we have median. So median, that is the middle values. Think of it like median of a road. The median is the middle, so these are middle values. And to find the median, what you do is you arrange them from least to greatest, and then the middle one is the median. But if there's an even amount, it says if there's an even amount of values, what you do is you take the average of the middle two. And we're gonna see that in our first example down below. Lastly, we have mode. So mode is the value repeated most. So if you have maybe a measurement of 20, 20 centimeters, or whatever it happens to be, if that gets repeated the most, that would be the mode. And it is possible to have no mode. So if no number gets repeated, you got no mode. Or maybe you have a couple different values where they're repeated, then you could have multiple modes. So maybe 20 centimeters happens five times and 25 centimeters happens the same amount of times, both of those would be the mode. So looking at our first example here, it says the data below represents the time taken to the nearest minute for a high school student to drive to school on each of the last 10 school days. And we're gonna be calculating those three things that we looked up top. So first we're gonna calculate the mean driving time for the data. So we're gonna be finding the average. Mean means the average. Now in this case, it's not an entire population of data. We didn't take all of the days that he has driven to school. We're just taking the last 10. And so what we are finding is X bar. It's just for a sample, okay? So X bar, that's for a sample, not for a population. So our average or our mean is gonna be taking all of these numbers, adding them up. So you could just do that in your calculator. Just go one plus the next one plus the next one. And when you add those all up, you're gonna get 142. And the number of terms that there are here, if you count up how many terms there are, there's 10 different values there. So it's 142 divided by 10, and that's gonna give us 14.2. And these were times, so our units, it was measured in minutes. So our mean there is 14.2 minutes. Next, for part B, it says state the median of the data. And so for that, we're gonna have to put these numbers in order so I can see where the middle is. So I'm gonna write them out in order. The smallest one is 10, so I'm gonna start with 10. And then as I go, I'm gonna check them off so that I know I've done that one. So 10, then I got an 11. So we'll put 11, checked it off. Then there's a 12 right there. Then there's a 13. Then I see a 14, then I see a 15 here, 
And I actually have another 15 right there. So I gotta put 15 twice. Then there's 16, 17, and then we got 19. Okay, so use those checks to make sure that you've gotten every single value. And you could count these up here. You should have 10 different numbers over here. So to find the median, we have to find the very middle. So in this case, we had 10 different numbers. So there is no exact middle. Whenever there's an even amount, you can't find the middle. So if you'd count five in from the one side, that would get you to 14. And if you'd count five in from the other side, that would get you to 15. So the very, very middle is these two numbers right there. And whenever there's two kind of middle numbers, what we do is we take the average of those. So I just got written here, there's no middle, so we're gonna have to take the average. So I'm gonna take the 14, add it with 15, and then after divide by two. So 14 plus 15 is 29. And then after I divide that by two, I'm gonna get 14, 0.5 and again my units these were minutes so we're done median now we can look at mode and remember mode is just the number that repeats the most and the only number that actually repeated was 15 we had two 15s so our mode is simply just 15 minutes moving on to our next thing here now so we're going to be looking at measures of central dispersion and the word dispersion what that means is spread so basically how far the data values are spread out so it says a measure that varies based on how spread out the data is if all data in a set are identical the dispersion would be zero it's not dispersed at all and it's going to increase as the data becomes more spread out so as you have more data that's spread out it's going to increase and for central dispersion, the two things that go with that are range and standard deviation. So whenever you hear the word central dispersion, think range and standard deviation. So range is the difference between the largest and smallest values. So it goes from how small it is to how big it is. You want to figure out what that range is from small to big. The standard deviation, we use this symbol here. It's kind of like a handwritten O, but that stands for, it's just the Greek letter sigma but it stands for standard deviation. And that is a measure that describes the spread between data values and the mean. So basically, if you know what the mean is, the very middle, standard deviation kind of tells you how far off you are from the mean, the very middle. And luckily in this class, we're not gonna be calculating it by hand. We're gonna be using our calculator. So you're definitely gonna need a graphing calculator for this. I'll show you how very quickly right now how you would do it by hand but it takes a very long time and that's why we're not doing it by hand so if you were calculating standard deviation by hand this is kind of what it would look like so if you had say Paige here and this is the percentage of her free throws so for one game she shot 34 percent then 35 then 33 so these are all her different games for her free throw percentage what we'd have to do first is we'd have to calculate the mean so you would add these all up and then divide by, there were 10 games here, so you divide by 10, and that was her mean or her average for her free throws. Then what you'd have to do is we have to take each one of these points and subtract it from the average. So that's what we're doing right here. I'm taking 34 and I'm subtracting it from the mean, and then I get out this value, and I do that with every single one of these. Once you have all of these, what you need to do is you need to square them. So you square it, I'd get this value, square this, get that, okay? And each one of these is just being squared. Once you have all of these, and that's gonna be taking a lot of time to find that, then what you do is you add these all up, okay? So you add up all the squares, some of the squares, we'd get this, if we'd add all these, we get 6.9 and then divide that by the number of data values. There were 10 different games, so divide by 10, and then we get this. And then once you have that, what you do in your very last step is you would take the square root of that, and that would give you your standard deviation. So that is a lot of calculations. That is why we're not doing it by hand in this class, because it would take you an entire test or an entire quiz just to calculate one standard deviation. It takes a very long time. So we're going to be using our calculator when we do that. 
Some things to note about standard deviation though, a low standard deviation means that most of the data values are close to the mean, which means it's more consistent. So that would be like your free throw percentage is 20% every single time. You don't really deviate from that, maybe it's 21, then it's 19, but it's, it's really, really low, you don't deviate very much. A high standard deviation though means most data values are spread out from the mean. So maybe your average free throw percentage is 30%, but you have some games where your free throw percentage is really bad and it's way down at 10%, and then you have some other games where your free throw percentage is really, really good, and it's maybe like 60%. So that means you have a high standard deviation. You're going from really low to really high. And what that looks like visually, if you have low standard deviation, that means you are basically getting the same thing all the time. Maybe you're shooting 20% free throws, medium standard deviation right here is where maybe your kind of middle is 20% but then you got like a 30% and a 40% they're all kind of shared equally and then high standard deviation maybe your mean is in the middle but you only got really high percentages on your free throws or you only got really low you didn't have like a central tendency you were just really low or really high so to calculate standard deviation we're going to have these steps and we're going to go through them in our calculator in this first example. So you can just look at the notes and kind of follow along, but we're going to go through in our calculator and then these will make a lot more sense. When we get out our information from our calculator, it's going to give it to us like this. It's going to show us this X bar that stood for mean. It's going to have this sigma symbol X, that's standard deviation for a population. That would be if we had every single piece of data. And then S of X is standard deviation again, but this is just for a sample. Remember, a sample is when you only took a few of the data pieces. And then N, this is the last line in the information it'll spit out. And this we just use to verify the number of values that we've put in. So if you had 10 data points, this N should say 10 at the end. If it says 9, that means you maybe missed entering in one of the data points. Okay, so. This might not have made a lot of sense, but when we do an example, hopefully it makes more. So we're going to look at this one right here. It says calculate the mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation for the math quiz marks rounded to the nearest hundredth. So these are all of the quiz marks for a quiz, 75%, 41%, and so on, all the way up to 77%. So what we got to do first is we're going to put these into a list and we're going to organize them so that they are in order. Okay, so I'll show you how we can do that. So we pulled out our graphing calculator and then what you're going to do, it doesn't matter which type of graphing calculator you're actually using, both of them will be the exact same, but you're going to go into your stat, so you'll click stat, and then if you click edit, and this is in the steps that we had just up top here in blue, then you'll click edit and then you can put in different values into these lists. So I've already typed them into this list number one. All you do is you go over to the list and then you type it in, click enter, it'll go to the next one and then the next one as you type them in. Okay, so make sure you got them all in there. And then what you can do is you can click stat and then what we wanna do is we wanna sort and A means it's going to put them in increasing order. Sort D means it's going to put them in decreasing order. So we want to sort them in increasing order. So I'm going to do option number two. And then it'll take you to the main page and it's asking which, which list do you want to sort. So you'll click second and that gets you to blue buttons and then L1 is right above one. Okay, so click that. And now what it's going to do is it's going to sort list one. So when I click enter, it'll say done, meaning that it actually sorted it. So if I go back to stat and to edit to see my list, it has now put these in order from lowest test mark all the way down, if I would scroll, all the way to the highest test mark. So I'm going to write out on our page now that list all in order. So that's it right there. Starts at 24, 38, all the way up to someone managed to get 100% on the quiz. Okay, so once we have that, now we can start to answer the question that it asked for. And we were wanting to calculate these things. So the mean, median, mode, and our range, and then our standard deviation. 
And in this case, when we put it into our calculator and we find our standard deviation, we're looking for this one because this is for the population. These are every single test score on the quiz. It wasn't some of them. It wasn't a sample. It was all of them. So it was a population. So to find the mean, we're going to have to add all these up and then divide by the number of terms. But our calculator can also do that for us. So to do that on our calculator, and we had the steps up top there, but I'm just going to run through them now. What you do is you click stat, and then we want to calculate something. So you go over to calc, and then you're going to click one var stats. So click enter on that. And then what it's going to ask for you in this type of calculator, I'll do it again in this one after, it'll have the list. And we had our information in L1. So I'm going to put in L1. And we didn't have a frequency list, so make sure there's nothing here on the frequency list. Okay, so there should be nothing there. And then you'll go down to calculate. And then it'll calculate it for us. So it's got the mean, it's got our standard deviations right here, and then this n says 16. We entered in 16 terms, and there were 16 test scores. So that's how you do it on this type of calculator. I'll show you how we can do it on this other older TI-83 calculator. It's very similar. So you'll click stat. On this one too, you can see I already typed them in to my list. All I got to do now is calculate it. And to do that, you'll click stat. We want to calculate something. One var stats. So you'll click enter on that. And then it takes you to the main menu like this. And then what you got to put in, it was list one that you put your information in. So you just got to put in L1 and then click enter, and then it too will give you the exact same information. So it's just kind of the last step is a little bit different. So let's write down that information that we just got. We'll go back to our page. We're gonna write down our mean, our standard deviation. It was this right here, this 21.119, and we're gonna round this all, it said, to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so let's go back. Our mean, it told us it was 66.81. So 66.81. Our median, to do that, we needed to find the middle. And in this case, there were 16 terms. So if you count 8 in from this side and 8 in from this side, that's going to get us to this 73 and this 74. And then what we're going to do is, because there's no exact middle, you got to take the average. So we're going to go 73 plus 74, divide that all by 2. And when we do that, you'll get 73.5. So that's our median. Our mode is the number that repeated the most. And because I had them all in order, I can see the only one that actually repeated here, we got 56 twice. And there's no other number that repeated more than once. So 56 is our mode. So I can write down 56. Your calculator, it doesn't have that in there. That one you got to do on your own. Uh, the range, that one we also got to do on our own. So we got to take the largest and then subtract the smallest. So I'm going to go 100, subtract 24, and that's going to give me 76. So there's our range. And then our standard deviation, that one our calculator did give it to us, and we had to use this one. We can't use the S of X. Maybe I'll just pull my calculators up quick. We can't use the S of X. S is for sample. This one is for population, so it was all of them. So this is going to be 21.1, and then rounding to the nearest hundredth, it's going to be 21.12. So let's write that down, 21.12. So hopefully that one didn't feel too bad. Your calculator is going to do a lot of the work for you, so make sure you just get good at using your calculator. Uh, moving to our next example, this one we already looked at from before. So here it says... Uh, Brennan works part-time in the canteen at his local community center. One of his tasks is to unload delivery trucks. He wondered about the accuracy of the mass measurements given on two cartons that contain sunflower seeds. He decided to measure the masses of the 20 bags of the two cartons. One carton contained 227 gram bags and the other carton has 454 gram bags. So they're just two different sizes of sunflower seed bags. So the question we're asked, it says, how can measures of dispersion, and remember, measures of dispersion are range and standard deviation. So we're going to calculate and find these. 
So how can those be used to determine if the accuracy of the measurement is the same for both bags? So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how consistent both of these bags are. If they have a low standard deviation, it's going to be more consistent. If it has a high standard deviation, it's going to be less consistent or not consistent. So I am going to group my information into a table where I got 227 gram bags and then on the other side I got my 454 gram bags. So to calculate this, all you do is you take all of these data points up here, which there are quite a few, you take all of those, put those into one of your lists, and then you'd use the exact same steps as what we just had on the previous screen. So you just type it all into a list and then you'd follow, I'll go back to the steps. You'd follow these steps right here. So you'd edit your list, type all your data points in, you click stat, go over to the calculate, you do your one var stats, and then depending on your calculator, if you had the newer one, you could just click enter three times. If you had the older one, it took you to the main screen and then you just had to put in uh, L1 or wherever you put your information. So when you do that, you're gonna get your mean is 227.15 grams. Again, the information was given in grams. And then our standard deviation is 5.227 grams. So just to look at that information, our average, right, if we were supposed to have 227 gram bags, this is 0.15 off. So it's 0.15 off of the average or what it should be. The spread or the standard deviation, that's this, it's about 5.23. So it's off by a little bit. Looking at the 454 gram bags, so over on this side, you'd have to put in this information, put it into your calculator, and then it'll give you out all that information. So the information we get from that one, our mean is 454.5. So that is 0.5 off of the average. So this should be a 0.5 there actually. And the standard deviation, that is about 4.498. So if we rounded that, our spread or our standard deviation is about 4.50. Now, looking at these spreads, these two right here are standard deviations. This one is smaller. So the smaller standard deviation, that means the more consistent it is. So the sunflower seeds in this bag, more of them are closer to what it actually should be. The ones in this one, they are more spread out. Some of the bags weigh more than they should and some weigh less than what they should. Okay, so we looked at standard deviation. Then we gotta look at our range. Because remember, we are looking at measures of dispersion and that's range and standard deviation. So for a range, you just took the smallest value that was in there. So looking at this one, the smallest one was 218, and you subtracted that from the largest. So 236 subtract 218, the range is 18 grams. It varies 18 grams from the smallest to the biggest. If we look at the range for the 450 gram side, so over here, you had to take the smallest and subtract that from the largest. So 463 subtract 445, and again, I'm just picking the smallest one and the largest one out of up here and subtracting them. And that one too, you get 18 grams. So that one also has the exact same range. So we can conclude that the 454 gram, this one has a smaller spread, so it's gonna be more consistent. More of the bags weigh the same amount. So we are now on to our last example here. And the steps for this one are gonna be down here, but again, we're gonna go through it in our calculator. So it says, Mr. Stewart organized the results of a math quiz shown in the chart below. So I can see he's got marks right here, 40, 50, 60, all the way up to 100. And then this column tells us the frequency or the number of students that got that mark. So one student got 40, two students got 50, and so on. So looking at part A, it says, how many students wrote the quiz? So to figure out how many students wrote, you gotta take the number of students in each one and add those all up. So when you add those all up, you're gonna get 32. So there were 32 students. Part B, what is the mode of the data? Remember, mode is the one that occurs the most. And if I look over here, there were 10 students that got a 70. So 70 is gonna be our mode. And that was because, again, 10 students got the 70%. Part C, what is the range of the data? So for that, again, we gotta take the largest value and then subtract off 
the smallest value, so that's gonna be 100 minus 40, so that is 60. So the range is, and we could add percent to this, it ranges 60%. And we could also add to this one, it was 70%. So next what it says right here, this is gonna be really important, it says to find the mean and standard deviation of the data set using a graphing calculator, we must enter not only the data values, so that are these, but also their frequencies, so how many times it occurred, and that was this right here. So these are our steps, but I'm gonna go through it in our calculator, in both the newer calculator and the older calculator. So I'm just gonna pull up my calculators. So what we would need to do is we first need to enter the information. So you would click Stat, then you would go to Edit, and it's gonna be the exact same for this calculator and then you would type it into a list. Now, let's say you didn't want to delete the stuff that you had in list one. You could move over into list two and then put in all of those percentages in list two. So 40, 50, 60, 70, all the way up to 100. Then in your L3, list three, you could put your frequencies that you had. And those were these right here. So one, two, eight, 10, and you just type them in and make sure they're across from the right one. Okay, it'd be the exact same on this calculator. The steps are no different. Once you have that though, if I wanna calculate the mean or the standard deviation, you'd click stat, then you wanna calculate something, so go over to calculate, and it's gonna be one var stats. So you'd click that, and then it gives you options. So list is the data points that you put in. So we put in these percentages into list two. So I need to put in list two. So that was second two. And then my frequency list, that was this other column that we had put in, I put that into L3. So I gotta click second and then three. And then all I do is I can go down to calculate and then it'll calculate those for me. Now I'll do the exact same thing in this other calculator. So I go to stat, then I go to calc, one var stats, but again, it takes you to the main menu and then you have to put in the lists. So I put it into L2, so I'm gonna put L2, and then you'll put a comma, that comma is right here, so comma, and then L3 was where our frequencies were. So you just gotta remember the order, it goes your data points and then your frequency list. So that was entered into L2 and then L3. And then I can click enter, and it'll calculate it, and you can see the values that we got in both of these, they are the exact same. So our average from both of these is 69.6875. We're gonna write that down here in a sec. And then our standard deviation, we're gonna to have to use this one, because remember, this one, S, think S for sample. We had the entire class in here, so it's the entire population. So we have to use this one. That one was for standard deviation of the population. So 12.115 and then some other decimals. So let's write those out down here now. So that was, we had in our calculators, both of them the exact same, 69.6875, and then there were some other decimals. And then for our standard deviation, again, that's the wrong symbol, let's put the right one. It was this sigma symbol, and we got 12.115, and then some other decimals. So our mean or our average mark is about 70%, and then our standard deviation or our spread is about 12.1%. Now one thing I didn't mention, if you were given information where instead of just having like a 40, maybe it had from like 40% to 45%, what you do is you just put in the middle number. So let's say hypothetically you had from like 40, we'll pick a really simple example, you had from 40, to 42, the middle number would be 41, and you would enter a 41 into your calculator. So anytime you're given an interval here, you're gonna put in the middle number. So hopefully that last one there wasn't too confusing with your calculator. Uh, the last thing we got here is just our textbook questions. So it's on page 261, we got four, six, 10, and 11.